This is Jeremy Christian, who was found guilty of murdering two people in Portland, Oregon. Christian was on a packed train when he suddenly broke out on a racial rant towards two young women. You can see bystanders step in to attempt to stop Christian. Unfortunately, the situation escalated and Christian stabbed and killed two men and seriously wounding a third. You can see Christian fleeing the crime scene. Passengers of the train followed him and he was arrested about a mile away. During the arrest, you can see Christian in the back of the patrol car. I'm happy as a Christian was later found guilty of two counts of murder and attempted murder. Now at the sentencing, one of the victims delivers a victim impact statement, and this is where Christian has an outburst. To Mr. Jeremy Christian, your mom should have swallowed you. You are a waste of breath, and when you die and go to hell, I hope you rot. See you there. You ain't gonna be After Christian is escorted out of the courtroom, the judge sentenced him to two consecutive life terms, plus more than 25 years for his other convictions. This is Daniel Villegas. He spent 18 years in prison for a double homicide he never committed. In El Paso, Texas, Villegas was arrested at 16, where an El Paso detective reportedly threatened him with beatings and the death penalty if he did not confess. And the teenage Villegas signed a confession that was prepared by the detectives. He tried to withdraw his confession a few hours after, but by then, it was too late. He was charged with two counts of capital murder. With the false this confession being the only piece of evidence, the jury was unable to agree on a verdict. Villegas had a retrial and the jury returned a guilty verdict and he was given a life sentence. After spending 18 years in prison, the verdict was thrown out and Villegas remained out on bond where he got married and started a family. But now, we're in the third trial. If the defendant will please stand. This is the moment that Villegas will find out if he'll go home with his family or be sent back to prison to serve his life sentence. The state of Texas versus Daniel Villegas. Verdict form B. We, the jury, find the defendant Daniel Villegas not guilty of... <laughs> Villegas is now a free man. You are no longer under any conditions. You are free. To leave. Thank you. Reportedly, Viegas has filed a lawsuit against the city of El Paso. This is Austin Myers and Timothy Mosley. They were both convicted of murdering 18-year-old Justin Back in Waynesville, Ohio. The two men, Myers and Mosley, went to Back's house in an attempt to rob a safe that belonged to his father. During the robbery, Back was strangled with a choke wire. The idea of strangling them, that way it would create no mess, uh, pretty much be an easier job to handle. Uh, obviously, Justin was trying to put up a fight and he wasn't overpowering us. Justin Back was then stabbed 21 times until he died. Justin was trying to ask us why. He was pleading to stop and pretty much begging for his life. On trial, Mosley testified against Myers to obtain a plea bargain where he pled guilty and was sentenced to life in prison. Finally, for Myers, he takes the stand in front of the jury asking them to spare his life for his family in hopes of avoiding the death sentence. If you choose for me to die, it's only going to cause more pain and suffering for another family, not me. It won't hurt me. I won't feel anything. It's going to hurt more innocent people. This is now the father of Justin Back speaking. I'm not going to stand up here and tell you how much I hate you. That is without question. I would just hope that every time you close your eyes at night, you see my son Justin. After the jury recommended the death sentence, this is Meyer's last chance to plead for his life in front of the judge. I think there's a lot of good things I can do with my life if you allow me to keep my life. And the judge doesn't buy it. He hands down the maximum sentence. 
The defendant does not understand how precious life is. Therefore, the sentence of death shall be imposed upon Austin Gregory Myers on the charge of aggravated murder. Nothing but a slight nod. At just 19 years old, this made Myers the youngest Ohio individual to be put on death row. He is currently awaiting his execution at Chillicothe Correctional Institution. There were so many lives destroyed by this, and it was just for nothing. I mean, there was no money in the safe. There was nothing in there. They did this for basically nothing. This is Michael Swanson, who was 17 when he went on a killing spree of two Iowa gas station attendees in the span of an hour. Where did you shoot? Front of the body? Yeah. In the face? In the face? Okay. Right, right in the face. I was just going to shoot the engineer. Why would I shoot her at all? Swanson entered a gas station in Elgano, Iowa in a ski mask and a handgun demanding cash and cigarettes from 47-year-old Vicki Bowman Hall. Despite following the request without hesitation, Swanson still shot and killed her. An hour later in Humboldt, Iowa, Swanson repeated the same act in another gas station, this time killing Sheila Myers. He was arrested 60 miles away from the shooting when authorities identified his vehicle. With both victims following his request but were killed anyways, it indicated that murder was Swanson's primary goal. How did, how did it feel when you pulled the trigger? I mean, some people say that, you know, it feels powerful or that it's kind of a rush or what did you feel when you pulled the trigger? I feel powerful. Swanson was charged with two counts of first-degree murder and two counts of burglary. All allegations of Swanson's motives were answered by himself. I then intentionally, deliberately, and with premeditation shot the clerk, causing her to die. I did this with an specific intent to kill her. Now, as one of the victim's daughters gives a victim impact statement, Swanson sits completely emotionless. How could you do what you did to my mom and my family? I want to know if you're even sorry. Are you sorry for what you did? My mom was not only completely 100% innocent, but she was also a defenseless woman when you came in with that gun. You said you did it for cigarettes and money and so no one could identify you, but I think that's a lie. You did it as you later said on that it was so you could feel powerful. As Swanson was sentenced, he smiled and laughed. Cold-blooded murder. Cold-blooded murder, young man. You are dangerous. You are unpredictable. Prison for the rest of your life. Swanson was given two life sentences, and four years into his sentence, he slit another inmate's throat. This is Bryce Rhodes, who is currently on trial for three counts of murder in Louisville, Kentucky. Rhodes reportedly begun his killing spree when he shot and killed an innocent man, mistaking him for another individual. Two brothers, a 16-year-old and a 14-year-old, were in the car when Rhodes committed the murder. Because they were witnesses to the crime, a few weeks later, Rhodes killed those teenagers as well. You close to these kids at all? Oh. Uh... Like, cool, we play basketball. I'm cool, a lot of people. Did you hang out with them on a regular basis? It was cool. Yeah, we hung out different times, you know. I need a lawyer, man, if you're gonna keep all in my face. Trials have been going on for years due to Rhodes' erratic behavior, starting with blowing kisses to people in the courtroom, which included the family of the victims. And next, making hand gestures. Ma'am, ma'am, look at me, ma'am! Mr. Rhodes, you're smiling. I don't know why you're smiling. No, nope, because I can't. It's not a crime to smell. I would suggest right. you do what helps okay. you, not what hurts you. Okay. That's do what I want to do. Let's get that understood. Rhodes once had to wear a spit mask because he spit on this attorney. Nice cheap shot. You a coward. Nice cheap You a coward. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Now, in another court appearance, Rhodes makes some bizarre accusations towards the judge. I don't know if y'all got some type of sexual relationship going on. Are you some type of racist? Which one is it? Or are you just wrong in everything huh? that you make huh? emotions for? Are you a secret Ku Klux Klan member? <laughs> no, sir. Is that what you really are? With Rhodes' in-court behavior being out of control and him firing several of his lawyers, the trial has been extended much longer than expected. With it still in action, it's safe to say that Rhodes will not be back on the streets anytime soon. 
This is Antonio Barbeau, who with his best friend Nathan Pop brutally murdered his great-grandmother in an attempted robbery in Sheboygan County, Wisconsin. We got in, and then I looked to Nate, he nodded, and then I took the first swing. Okay, and when you say that you took the first swing, is with the hand axe? Yes, sir. The boys, who were both only 13 at the time, had intended to sneak up at his great-grandmother's and rob her. But upon showing up at the house, they were spotted and invited inside. She was attacked with a hatchet and a hammer, ultimately being struck at least 27 times until she died. She started heading into the living room falling. And as she was falling, did you strike her again? I hit one more time as no. she was falling. At any point, did you not have the hand axe during this incident? Right after that, Nate took it and he used it, the blade side of it. You said that he took off the sweater by that. Do you mean the sweater that you had given him? Yes. Why did he do that? I think because it was getting in the way. Getting in the way of what? Him swinging. They then stole $155 in cash and some jewelry before stealing the car and ditching it at a local bowling alley, hoping to frame someone else for the crime. A few days later, both boys were arrested. Now in court, Barbeau takes the stand to testify. We were going to try to scare her to get money and then use force if needed. And when you say use force if needed, was there a discussion about what type of force you might use? Um, an attack, uh... I guess to kill. Barbeau pleaded no contest to first degree intentional homicide as part of a plea deal where he was sentenced to life in prison with eligibility for parole in 36 years where he would then be 50 years old. In his final statement, his lawyer had to finish his thoughts. I know I don't show my emotions much. I myself am not sure why, but that doesn't mean I don't. I took away someone's mother, grandma, sister, friend, when I had no right to do so. Pop was sentenced to life in prison as well, but with a chance of parole when he's 45 years old. This is Christopher McNabb, who is facing charges for the murder of his two-week-old child in Covington, Georgia. After the child's mother reported the baby missing to police, local law enforcement immediately launched a search. Later that night, McNabb is seen in front of TV cameras begging for his child back. I want my kid back, man. That's my child, man. I want my kid, man. The next day, the child's body was found in a nearby wooded area. The cause of death was blunt force trauma to the head, which was later ruled a homicide. McNabb was arrested and charged with the murder of his own two-week-old baby. After he was found guilty, we now move on to the sentencing. McNabb can then be heard claiming his innocence. I'm innocent. I didn't do it. I've maintained that the whole time. I would never do this. That's all I got to say. I would never do it. I'm innocent. And now the judge lets McNabb unknowingly choose his own sentence. You claim you're innocent, so you tell me what sentence the man or woman that you claim did this should receive. If you ever find out who did them, they deserve to be under the jail. Okay, so they ought to get the maximum sentence. Most definitely. Okay. On the crime of malice murder, I sent you to life in confinement without parole. On considering the death of another, I sent you to... After McNabb was handed down the max sentence, he was moved to Hayes State Prison in Tryon, Georgia, where he is serving his life sentence. This is Susan Mellon. She was sentenced to life in prison without parole based on an untruthful testimony. She was 42 years old when she was arrested in Los Angeles, California at a McDonald's while taking her daughter to get a Happy Meal. But that was the last time she would see her child for seven years as she was charged for the murder of an ex-boyfriend. You are under arrest now for murder. Okay. <laughs> Mellon's conviction was based solely on an informant who claimed that Mellon had confessed the killing to her. She was in prison for a total of 17 years until the informant was proven to be a pathological liar and an unreliable witness. And now, this is the moment that Mellon's case is finally overturned. The judgment is vacated, the conviction is overturned, and as to Ms. Mellon, the case is dismissed. From tears in one moment to jumping in joy the next. When released, Mellon took her daughter to McDonald's to deliver that long-awaited Happy Meal. The state of California awarded Mellon $597,000 in compensation. And reportedly, the Los Angeles City Council agreed to pay $12 million to Susan Mellon. 
This is Nico Jenkins, who was convicted on four counts of murder when he went on a killing spree in the span of 10 days in Omaha, Nebraska. At 15 years old, Jenkins was sent to a youth correctional facility and served a 10-year sentence in prison for carjacking and assault. A month after his release, Jenkins shot and killed two individuals in a robbery. Eight days later, his next victim was a former inmate he originally met in prison. He was shot and killed in his own garage. Two days after that, Jenkins killed his fourth victim in a carjacking. Jenkins was arrested for unrelated charges, but it was here that cops were able to pin the ammo used in one of the killings to Jenkins. You not realize I got Nico Jenkins? Do you not realize that? I got Nico Jenkins. I got you. What do you mean you got me? I got your DNA at the murder scene. I got your DNA in the car. Yes, sir. I got the weapon. I got Nico Jenkins. Jenkins pleaded no contest to four counts of first degree murder. He also waived his right to a jury trial, meaning a three judge panel will decide if he is innocent or guilty. Each one of these murders was a deliberate and planned act. The victims were pre-selected and the murders were purposeful. After Jenkins is found guilty of all four murders, he sits still with little movement. And now comes his sentence. Therefore, this panel finds that the death penalty is appropriate, should be, and is hereby given for each of the four murders by the defendant. As Jenkins is sentenced to death, he seems to be completely unfazed. He is currently incarcerated at the Nebraska State Penitentiary awaiting his death sentence. This is Ryan Stone, a Colorado man that went on a crime spree that spanned five counties and was broadcasted live by a news station's helicopter. Stone was convicted of carjacking three vehicles, including one with a four-year-old inside the SUV. Authorities said when Stone sped away, he led police on a chase at speeds over 100 miles per hour. If we rewind here, you can just barely see a vehicle that Stone was driving clipping a trooper with the Colorado State Patrol as he was trying to play stop sticks. He ended up with serious injuries. You see Stone pull out another victim from their vehicle and drive off. He heads right into a busy intersection. And now, the chase is on foot. He books it off the road into a parking lot, running in between two buildings. As he slips on the ice, he loses his jacket. Cops now close in and he finally surrenders. Stone is now in the county jail, but he believes he should be getting paid for his internet fame while bragging to his friends about the high-speed chase. Hey, did you know I made the news in the UK and Australia? What? Yeah, I get paid by YouTube. So, uh, Channel 7 News, I believe, is going to be the one that gets paid for that? Well, um, I'm going to contact Channel 7 News. I want to get paid. You guys are getting paid using my name and my video footage. During his opportunity to address the court about the recordings in jail, Stone blames it on emotional stress and the use of drugs. We are going through trial after that. It was a week and a half trial. Extremely stressful. One of the phone calls about seeming like I was bragging about uh, making international news, this, that, and the other. That was within the first week of being arrested. Still coming off of drugs. Stone was convicted of 18 charges, including attempted manslaughter, child abuse, and assault. Then, the judge sentenced him to 160 years in prison. This is Tanner Jacobson, and to his right is Cody Howard, and they're in Chehalis, Washington. They are both dressed in prisoner uniforms and handcuffed as they appear on the third floor of the Lewis County Courthouse. Jacobson is in for charges of reckless driving and driving with a suspended license. Howard is in for charges of second degree burglary, first degree trafficking in stolen property, third degree driving with a suspended license, and two warrants for failure to appear in court. Right here is Judge R.W. Buzzard. It appears there are no deputies in the room. Then Howard and Jacobson decide to do the unexpected and make a run for it. First goes Howard, then Jacobson. It appears this bystander almost goes after the scapees, but is held back. Judge Buzzard doesn't hesitate. You can see him ripping off his robe and going after the two men. They just made it out of the courtroom, but they're still in their handcuffs and sandals. Now, in the third floor stairwell, 
Judge Buzzard is closing in. With only one more floor to go, it's going to be a close one. After Jacobson takes a quick look around, he's out the door and gone. But for Howard, not that easy. Judge Buzzard caught up and captured him. Jacobson was later picked up a couple blocks away. I only get like four blocks and then I stop. Like I just stopped on my own. I'm like, what am I doing right now? I said, what am I doing? What did I just do? I gotta go with it now. There's nothing, I can't stop right here. There's nothing I could do now. I'm, I'm screwed. We were sitting there on the benches together and he's like, he's like, I'm gonna run. It was just a split second like, decision. I don't even know why I did it. Like, I would be out of here if I wouldn't have ran. They were both charged with second degree escape. Reportedly, Jacobson was sentenced to one year and one day, and Howard was sentenced to just over three years behind bars. This is Kimberly Kessar, who was charged with the murder of her co-worker in Nassau County, Florida. Jordan Beard is Jolene Cummings' cousin. Kessar was working at a Tangles hair salon under a fake name. She reportedly was on the run for 25 years and wanted in several states. She wouldn't be found until she brutally murdered her co-worker with scissors and allegedly disposed of her body. This is Kessar after she was arrested and awaiting trial. Are we on mute anyway so I can say whatever the f I want? We're not on mute. Oh, okay. And this is what it was like to supervise her in jail. Again, PCs from styrofoam trays in the back of her cell and smear on herself in the walls. She began to throw PCs at Smith and then we're not. Now in the trial, she had to go to a separate room due to her outbursts. I refuse it. I have refused it. I refuse the I public defender's office. They appointed Jolie Cummings' cousin as my public defender. What? You don't want the public to know that? And she continuously made false claims about her former public defender. Jordan! She was later found guilty of first degree murder and was sentenced to life in prison without parole. This is Donta Wright, who at 17 years old shot and killed a Pioneer High School student in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Wright and two others jumped and attacked the 18 year old student in an attempt to rob him. While fighting back, he was shot in the head and his body was left on a path until a maintenance worker found him. The boys were caught soon after and arrested. It was here Wright was supposed to have a pre-trial hearing, but instead he admitted to the crime in return for a plea deal. Did you in fact rob Jordan Fleet? Yeah. And did you use a gun to place him in fear in order to take his property? Yeah. And as a result of that armed robbery, what did you do with that gun and Mr. Jordan Fleet? Shot him. And where did you shoot him? On top. And did you kill him with that shot? Yes. Now, at his sentencing, the victim's family delivers a victim impact statement. Your Honor, my name is Courtney Clay and I'm Karen's cousin. She's asked me to read this on her behalf. I've lost my only child, my son, my baby, my friend. More than that, I've lost laughter and love. I no longer have the hope of having grandchildren. I've lost the enjoyment of holidays and birthdays and of everyday life. There will never be an answer good enough to satisfy why you shot my son. Wright can be seen smirking and seemingly showing no remorse. Your actions have led you to a prison cell, but have also created an empty cell that I live in every day. While you can still hope to be released one day, I'll never escape my hell. You are still alive, but Jordan has no future. And now it's Wright's turn to address the court for his actions. I just want to tell y'all, I'll be home soon. R.I.P. Keon, I love my family. And now the judge threatens to throw out the plea deal. Watching you sit there, smile, and laugh, and shake your head like this was no big deal. I'm very tempted to just say, I'm not going to accept this sentence agreement. We'll go to trial. And if you're convicted of felony murder, you'll go to prison for the rest of your life. That means you'll die there. That's what I'm tempted to do. After an hour-long recess, the judge and prosecution finally decided to accept the plea deal. He is currently facing a 25 to 52 year prison sentence. This is Seth Welch and Tatiana Fusari, a religious farming couple living in Cedar Springs, Michigan, and they are charged with murder of their 10 month old girl, Mary Welch. Reportedly, they told police they noticed the baby was skinny and underweight, but did not seek medical attention because of their religious beliefs and mistrust of medicine and the government. This is the 911 call of the father when he reportedly found his child dead. How long ago did you find your child? Uh, it's about an hour and a half. I um, was waiting. I called my lawyer first thing 
to ask, you know, what's the next thing I should do. I'm the child an hour and a half ago. Yeah. And called your lawyer first, correct? Yes. Okay. When was the last time you had contact with a child? Well, uh, last night, um, about last, yes, yesterday afternoon, about 3 uh, p.m. And, you know, she goes to bed. And, you know, that was that. Okay, so you put her to bed last yesterday at 3 p.m.? Yeah, and then this morning at, like, so you're saying it's normal for your children to sleep from around 3 p.m. till 10 a.m.? Uh, you know, usually about 9, 9.30, yeah. And you said when you found her, she was already believed to be deceased, right? Yes. And that's when you consulted with a lawyer? Yep. Do you believe she was beyond help already? Soon after, the autopsy revealed that the cause of death was malnutrition and dehydration due to neglect by the adult caregivers. And this is the moment they realize they will be spending the rest of their life behind bars. That you're both charged with what they call felony murder, while in the perpetration or attempted perpetration of child abuse in the first degree, they're alleging that you murdered one Mary Welch. That is a charge called homicide felony murder. It is life without parole. It requires a DNA sample to be taken upon arrest, which is often like a cotton swab or in the inside of your cheek. The second offense that you're both charged with is called child abuse in the first degree, where they're alleging you knowingly or intentionally caused serious physical harm to a child they're talking about this Mary Welch. It is a felony, possible penalty of up to life imprisonment, or any term of years less than life. This is Damon Kemp. He is charged with the double murder of his roommates in Daytona Beach, Florida. Police were called to investigate a burglary at an apartment complex, and it was here Kemp allegedly confessed to the murders. He was originally staying with his two roommates when both individuals were shot several times in the apartment. During Kemp's bond hearing, he's now escorted into court in a wheelchair. Ah! The judge tries to get Kemp's attention, but he's completely ignored. Mr. Kemp? God! Damon Kemp, I'm gonna conduct your first appearance. God! For the victim's family, it got so tough, they had to walk out. Kemp is currently in the Volusia County Jail, awaiting his trial. This is Eric Kelly, who was sentenced to life in prison for a robbery and murder he did not commit in Passaic County, New Jersey. Kelly was 28 when he was taken into custody after a man was killed working at a video store. Kelly suffered a tragic brain injury, making him suffer a cognitive disability, and he had trouble processing information from detectives and allegedly admitted to the crime, even though he had not done it. Despite no physical evidence, he was convicted and put in prison. It wouldn't be until 24 years later the case was reopened and major advancements in DNA testing proved that Kelly was not at the crime scene. Therefore, in light of the foregoing reasons, the motion for a new trial is hereby granted. A new trial was granted and Kelly is now outside of prison for the first time in almost a quarter century, still with the fear he might go back. My legal team, I want to thank them, I want to thank my family, I just want to get back to like actually living for once. Surprisingly, the prosecution later dismissed all pending charges against him. Kelly reportedly received $1 million in state compensation.